All right, hello and welcome back to Tom Q's Tech Tips. And today I want to talk about making the Roland V-1HD switcher quieter. So anyway, this is the uh, this is the switcher in question. I've actually owned this for a couple of years now, maybe maybe even three, and I purchased this for uh, switching in conference settings. So in a conference setting, I don't really actually need the switcher to be very quiet because the the microphones that we use in the conference are usually very far away from the switcher itself. So um, so anyway, it's not been a problem in that setting. Um, but here in a studio, um, there is a problem with the switcher. And uh, so anyway, I'm going to go ahead and plug it in and uh, with the included power supply and here's the power switch and I think you can hear this right now uh, I'm actually hearing it in here it feels like the sound is behind me so I'm definitely picking up the sound of the switcher has a fairly distinct hum and uh, and the reason for that is the the processors inside the switcher there's a different processor for each HDMI in port and there's uh, you know the main processor that's processing the whole signal so anyway um, all those things get very hot and it needs it needs a fan to get that that air out of here um, unfortunately, they chose a very small, obnoxiously noisy, high-pitched fan. So, uh, I'm going to show you what I did. Um, I was inspired by the only other video I've seen on the internet with this. I think the gentleman's name is Gabe. So, if you want to watch his hour-long video on what he did to do that, he's the uh, he's the expert. But I'm going to go ahead and turn this off and show you what I did. So. Um, anyway, let's see, let me go ahead and unplug this. Um, first thing I, first thing I bought was a little bag of heat sinks that are made for the Raspberry Pi. It came in a few different sizes. I think all, uh, some of the ones here, I've, I've used most of the ones. You'll see them once I open up the switcher, but these were made for the Raspberry Pi and, uh, they're just a little aluminum heat sinks. And uh, in the hour-long video, the gentleman shows how to take the, uh, take the sticker off and actually uh, paste these onto the chips. I didn't do that. I just peeled the stickers off and stuck them right to the chips. So mine are not, my approach there is not as effective as his. But let me go ahead and... Uh, turn the switcher upside down so so actually there are a I believe you're gonna actually have to take out these four screws which have a little hex head I've already done that and I've taken out the screws that are in the inside of this and I've not put them back and I don't believe I'm going to put them back ex unless I sell the switcher so anyway, the, the, uh, the, sc the screws that you're going to need to take out are going to be these six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, and so anyway, I'm going to go ahead and do that, and I will speed through this in the post-production. And in my approach, I'm going to be putting these screws in a little bag and just hiding them somewhere inside the switcher box because I'm not going to be putting them back in and you'll see why so you're gonna you're gonna want to be careful when you lift this up because there is there's a ribbon cable that's attaching this panel to the logic board underneath so hopefully I will not do any harm I actually put this back together for a conference in which I had to fly this piece of equipment to somewhere so I didn't want to have it open the way I'm going to be doing for you. Alright, 
So let's just turn this over a little bit. There is the ribbon cable that you want to be very careful with. And so what I'm going to do right now is just gently go ahead and move the power supply out of the way. I'm going to gently set this down on the table. And you can see the little uh, heat sinks that I have put onto the various processing chips. And um, these things, once you're, when your switcher is on, and I'm going to go ahead and turn it back on. Um, when your switcher is on, these, all of these chips get very hot, and some of them get extremely hot. Here's the little fan that um, that is the culprit that's making that high-pitched noise. It has a little plug right here on the logic board, and you can actually just grab it by the edges, and you can just unplug it right there. So this was approach number one, and I would actually, after I did this, I would actually do some very short, short switching jobs with it just open like this. But um, ultimately, you're going to want a little bit more airflow here. So I did a couple of things. First off, um, one of the things that I did, I took. Did I take this guy out? I did. I took I took this board out of the bottom case. Okay, I stuck the top in its little bottom panel here to keep it to keep it uh, in place. And then basically what I did was I took this piece and I put it on top of this board. And so just to get a little bit more airflow, I mounted these two shelf rails that I had in the basement just to get airflow underneath this metal piece here. And it so it just so happened that the screw holes for uh, in the in the shelving units lined up exactly with the four corners of this uh, this little unit here. So I don't know if you need this. You don't really need this extra little step to get the extra airflow. I found it a good way to just uh, to just keep this going. Let me go ahead and unplug this again for just a moment. Turn off, unplug. Let's go ahead and lift this up at once. Let me... And I actually I put this plastic piece on the board, took a pencil, drew a little hole inside each of the four holes and then drilled a very shallow hole in the center of those spots. And I just took a little teeny wood screw, dropped it into the four different silos, just to keep this from moving around. And didn't screw all the way through, but just just give it a little bit of tension there. And then I'm going to take this guy, line it up with those four screws, and we'll get to that in a minute. But I'm going to drop these little posts into the silos and just let that, we're going to let this thing stand right here. And I might have I might have drilled down, I might have uh, put them down a little bit further. And there we go. So I don't, that's it. Um, so I've got, very careful with this cable. So I've got a fully functioning little unit here. Um, turn it on. All of this still works. The This is getting routed through the cable here into the board. And... Um, so anyway, ultimately I wanted a little bit more airflow. So I've I've totally unplugged this this fan here. So these the the heat these are going to begin to heat up, especially as I start plugging things in and start doing some switching. So initially I bought 
These two little fans from AC Infinity, they are actually connected together with a USB cord. So this is the, these are the 80 millimeter fans. And so when, um, when you set these on top of the unit, they barely, with the little kind of silencers that they've got, I forgot what you call them, uh, they barely rest on top of this. So I actually used this for a few weeks while I waited for the next size to arise and it, it will work, but it's, you know, a little bump and this might fall down into the, on, onto the logic board. So, so anyway, I then ordered their 120 millimeter quiet fan and I actually took the, um, it came with this little grill. And so I actually took the grill off and this will actually almost perfectly mount. It's almost the exact right width between these little uh, rubber gaskets and might actually work to, to cut just a little bit to trim a little bit off of these, but I've actually found that it works pretty well. And so Anyway, there we go. These actually come with a, um, a pass-through USB so that you can actually hook up a second fan to them. Uh, very nice, very nice little design. I wish I'd gotten that for the 80 millimeters, but I need to plug this in somewhere. I'm gonna turn it off. So there's, this is what it sounds like with this fan off. Let me go ahead and turn this other, let me plug this other fan back in. Oh, you know what? Let's turn it on. Okay. That's the sound of the internal fan. And it, with the lid open, it might be a little bit louder, but it's almost more obnoxious with, with the lid on. So I'm going to go ahead and unplug that again and we'll get complete silence again. And then I'm going to go ahead and turn this guy on to just the low setting. So anyway, this, let me move this microphone back towards me. Now it's actually picking up the computer fans again. I'm going to switch microphones. All right, so here's the shotgun mic. And let's turn that that's up good. So so again, that's uh that's my solution. And again, I'm going to plug in the uh built-in fan. Turn off Plug that again. There's complete silence. And then I'm going to turn this one back on. And so I'm just operate. I just operate the entire switcher with it in the open position like this. So that's my solution. Uh, didn't require uh, pasting off. The logic board and and uh, learning how to do that whole process so hope you guys find that helpful thank you for tuning in to Tom Q's Tech Tips bye bye